Welcome to the channel. In this video, I will be talking about the Atlas build and going over the Atlas build from the beginning. There are a lot of new players and it's been a while since I started from the beginning to explain everything about playstyle, what the Atlas build is about, as well as what I'm wearing and why I'm wearing the things that I do. So without further ado, let's get started. The Atlas build is a melee combat tank build, and combat tank build essentially is a build that, or a combat tank from the beginning is just a PvP oriented tank. All right, there's environmental tanks, which are PvE oriented tanks, and combat tanks, because the two different tank types are significantly different, and um, it's hard to clump them together in a way. So that was build is geared more towards PvP. And the build excels at its durability, so ability to withstand battlefield trauma, sustainability, the ability to recover from said trauma, and uh, combat control, so stuns, CCs, and staggers. The main limitation for that was build is the offensive mobility, so your ability to catch a player who's running away, and execution power, so the ability to finish off an enemy soldier when they're low. And that's important because those two instances happen very frequently to the same Player. So a player who's running away tends to be within execution range and with that let's build you won't be able to kill anyone who's not trying to kill you or you'll have a significantly hard time trying to kill anyone who's not trying to kill you. However, for those who do try to fight to the death, it is incredibly difficult to take you down when you master the play style. It's not necessarily the build but it's the play style of that was built in conjunction with the build. So the build, and, and this is something I really want to stress, it's not about how powerful the things that you're wearing are. It's about what you choose to wear and how you play in conjunction with that. So what you're wearing should augment your strengths and cover your weaknesses. It's like a perfectly crafted sword for a particular individual, right? Who's a sword master. That sword master is skilled obviously with most swords, but there will be a sword that will fit their exact play style or exact fighting style, the weight, the looks custom to them, etc. So your build is just an extension of your play style. You use your build to set up the way that you want to play. Let's start with the attributes. We're going 370 con and 238 strength. We would like 250 strength and 350 con, however, with magnify and the many magnify pieces that we have, we are not able to get that split. But this is split is okay. And I'm not decreasing the amount of magnify, and I'll talk a little bit about that shortly. So, in terms of the gear, since we have so much constitution, each health piece that you have is significantly more advantageous in this build than in most other builds. So we want to fill in health as much as possible because it's percent based and the more your max health is, the more you will benefit from having health as a perk. So for your body, we'll fit in as many of those as possible. For us, we have about four of them because we can't put it on the chest as we need sturdy energy and that will fall in right to the second tier perks that I'll talk about. There are three perks that you would want on the body. Sturdy energy, accelerating resolve, and sundering shockwave. So those will be on the body and sturdy energy we could put on the shield, but it will de it will remove off of bar swap, so you don't want that. As well as the perks that we have on the shield are all very necessary. So fortifying shield rush for that 
extra fortify you hit up to three people with this you can get 33 percent per individual hit and then 30 fortification once again in pvp a very potent fortify and then sturdy which will allow you to keep on blocking so you can't have health on the chest so we have sturdy energy over there but we have health on all the other pieces that we're using next would be the second tier perks that we talked about and you want those on three body pieces that leaves two pieces that can have a secondary perk on it and we'll come back to that to that topic in a second so what you put for that secondary perk is up to you for the third tier perk that will be your primary defensive perk and your primary defensive perk is the perk that you want on as many pieces as possible if not all the pieces that you're using where it can fit in so the format would be health your second tier perk being weapon perk or special perk or things like conditioning and shirking heals or harnessing and then your primary defensive perk and for me the primary defensive perk that i have would be elemental version with that was build the main weakness would be its limitations which is catching people who are running away and trying to execute people who are low or also running away but when you're playing with the build you'll notice that getting into melee range is difficult without exposing yourself up to damage and so you want to cover your bases in which ranged attacks have more potential to do damage to you because you have to close in that gap compared to melee because melee players who are doing damage oftentimes come to you and when they come to you you can always shield bash or you can counter attack or you can block and fight them within that melee range but for range they're effectively safe until you close that distance so Closing that distance is, is very important and you can't necessarily chase them via block as you won't move fast enough. So recovering for range damage, elemental aversion on all the pieces and then for the amulet we have thrust protection and that will cover the physical aspects of it. And same thing with our chest which is for dark plate you get this from barnacles M1 and that will give you physical aversion. So Physical version, thrust protection, and then elemental version that covers up pretty much all range damage that can be done to you. Enchanted Ward, that's also a very good damage perk, third tier perk that we have. And there's this set, uh, Frigid Dawn, that you get from Glacial Tarn. It's the new Ice Expedition, and it drops from the last boss, and this is a very good set as you can have that secondary perk be almost another defensive perk which you can't craft so altogether for magna it has magnify on it which is why it's not as attractive as most people would like but the way that it seems magnify is going is they are exclusively or more like what i advise you to do is to exclusively use magnify only on pieces that can be crafted so if it can be crafted then i would advise you don't have magnify for that just so that you're not stuck with stat setups that you can't necessarily overcome unless you do 300 strength and 300 con then you can essentially use as much magnify as you want with this setup we can have four pieces of magnify and i like it that way because there will be other magnify pieces that will have very strong perks and if your build can only tolerate one or two pieces of magnify well then you won't have that extra damage or that extra survivability or that extra whatever that utility perk is granting that someone who can have more magnify will have in terms of the weapons for the sword and shield we have sure footing and we have life steals to mandatory perks jasper and the gem this is currently glitched when you add a rune glass gem in there so the damage 
max stack that you're getting is limited to only one it's not stacking and it's only giving you that eight percent but sure footing and you want sure footing over there so you can pair with mobility in the sword and shield passive tree or sword and shield uh, uh weapon mastery tree for the warhammer you want sunder and clara for the rend and you want trend recovery for the heals We have stone form. This is just an all-rounder good perk. Heals you up, and when you pair it up with the earring that I, I got this earring from Lazarus Farm, Lazarus, and this will drop for you. It's so like healing heart and regenerating, and then random third or something of that sort. So I have that, and that together, since we have such a high max health, this just heals you for a lot. This ring crafted, there's the Azov ring that sort of gives you all three of these perks if you want, but that has Magnify on it, so you want to get rid of that as soon as you can. Lost Stopwatch, this essentially allows you to perform what I like to call tertiary combos, and it also frees up some of the skill points in the sword and board tree. So tertiary combos, and I'll probably make a video on you know, introduction to pvp tanking and combat guide and and have something of that sort when well, i talk about that in, in greater detail but just a general overview when i say tertiary combo is uh when you cc two people at once you can get there and they don't have enough freedom to escape that cc reaction or that cc move then you can get guaranteed damage on two of them so you could do a heavy attack on one guy and then do the clear out into a shield bash into a wrecking ball into light attack on the second guy and that's a tertiary combo it's something that you actively plan out and you actively think about it to get the most amount of damage on two or more players hit with a particular cc and that's important that you start doing that so that you can maximize your aoe damage per cc hit but uh, with them decreasing CC duration overall, that becomes less and less viable and less and less useful as time goes on and less and less possible. So I have the Sword and Shield tree up now. With the Sword and Shield tree, essentially, it's remained pretty consistent throughout. This is our defensive tree. We use the Sword and Shield to uh, have our defense high and set up for the Warhammer combos. Right now with Shield Bash we don't have the last perk because we have last stopwatch and that essentially will allow us to free up those two skill points to get this battlefield mobility. Freeing Justice, this will purify a lot of different abilities off of you. You can, you can purify Roots off of you, you can purify Tether off of you with this. It's very situational because if you have multiple dots on you, it's, it's hard for you to... Or I have no idea how it prioritizes what gets purified. And the tracking on heavy attacks sort of roots you in place, unlike the light attacks that you can move with the light attacks and, and have good tracking to catch people. So the heavy attacks are a little bit harder to use on the sword and shield. But very useful, and it would be even more useful if you had something like Blood Drinker or Triton Recovery so you can heal while doing that. If you hit multiple people with that heavy attack on the sword and shield tree, then you can purify multiple debuffs off of you. Defensive formation, this is also a very good move. Um, and one thing that I will say about it is you can uh, retrospectively decrease damage that was applied prior to you blocking. So if you had a bleed on you or any form of dot on you that's ticking and you start blocking, then uh, you can uh, continue to decrease the ticks on you so the amount of damage that you're being ticked for is decreased as you block even though the bleed was applied before you started blocking let's see warhammer warhammer it's uh our damage bar right it's pretty much there to trade is there to heal and is there to do damage. The way we have the Warhammer bar set up is very specific. It's set up primarily for your DPS to be geared towards auto attacks. And everything that we have here is to make our auto attacks hit hard 
make our auto attacks do a lot of damage and that's primarily how we can prioritize what perks that we need. So on the body you notice that we didn't have penetrating wrecking ball. Well penetrating wrecking ball makes wrecking ball hit hard. We do like wrecking ball but it's not really for damage. Wrecking ball when I use it I use it with the intention that it could probably hit for a fraction of what I need to kill this person but it will guarantee the light attack for me to do damage and also for me to get these cooldowns. All these other passives, so armor pen and power, you have grit here, you also have execution damage when people are low health, that's good, recovery, getting more cooldowns, and this is important so when you're trading with players, that's when you do a lot of damage. And that's how you hit these very big numbers is when you stack up a lot of fortifies, you're stacking up fortify with things like wrecking ball and having players around you and with clear out and this clear out fortify is very special in the fact it's not a weapon specific fortify so this clear out is giving fortify to everybody including yourself so it persists off of bar swap so you can hit this fortify bar swap into shield rush and have a ton of fortify set up for you for yourself and that will heal you for quite a decent amount um, so you're fortified up and you can hit heavy attacks that do a lot of damage especially when you're taking damage it will refresh your cooldowns to allow you to have more guaranteed damage by hitting things like wrecking ball and clear out and shockwave giving light attacks for wrecking ball and clear out and then a heavy attack for shockwave and so that's really where the setup is coming from it's the healing from the warhammer and stacking a lot of fortify with abilities with the Warhammer so that you can trade and really get a lot of damage with those heavy attacks and with those light attacks. Uh, what else am I missing here? That's the general concept for the Warhammer and the Warhammer is a, has a lot of specific tech like mechanics and combat mechanics that it, that it utilizes and I, I have to make a separate video because there is a lot that I don't want to talk about. Having used this weapon almost exclusively with the sword and shield like People start commenting anytime I make one of these videos, uh, hey, well, nothing else is leveled up, man. <laughs> and uh, I think I'll just bring it out and say it out now. Yeah, I haven't really, I don't really play any of the other things. That allows me to hyper specialize in, in, what, I, in what I do and allows me to really make, in, make builds that I've tested in almost all the combat scenarios that have been exposed to me. Besides so great sword, I tried great sword. I just it couldn't I couldn't make it work for what I liked for for tanking. Really, it's good for DPS and defiance. Sense is very strong in melee combat, but Warhammer just has so much finesse. There's so much with the Warhammer that I want to talk about, and you have to be on the lookout for the combat guide that I'll probably make immediately after I do this. There's animation cancels. There's these recovery cancels. There's this medium and heavy and light mix up in terms of how you're throwing your auto attacks and that's very important with stamina management stamina stamina drain and trading uh, there's also tech with the abilities and that ties into why wrecking ball not wrecking ball but mighty gavel isn't really as good of a ability not only because of these two wasted skill points that aren't really all that necessary in the fact that reckon that uh, mighty gavel acts almost like a heavy attack in most scenarios and heavy attacks is just better overall but the fact that mighty gavel at the end of it has this animation lock that doesn't allow you to flow within the combat which is the beauty of wrecking ball and clear out is the flow that you get from using these two moves and how you can continue to to throw out very long combo chains on a weapon that is extremely slow so we'll talk all about that but for now that's all i have for you hope this helps some of the newer players who are just getting into using the atlas build and trying to set up their tank but until next time